Hey guys, good to see you all again. Uh, I didn't get to around to making my video last week because I didn't get my torque converter back in time from BMI Carts. But I finally got it back from the mail. You can see it right there. Everything looks pretty good. The problem I had with the old one, as I said before, is the driven pulley was warped. This one right here, the whole thing would kind of go like this, which was obviously not going to work when you spin this thing up to engine speeds. But they went ahead and replaced the driven pulley for me at no charge, obviously, and sent it back. So today, we're going to try to mount this Honda Clone motor with this torque converter attached so I can check my clearances against this steering upright right here on what would be the left side. And we're going to try to mount this motor. Alright, so I've temporarily set aside the racing lawnmower frame to turn my attention to mounting the Comet Clutch backing plate up to my Honda Clone motor. You can see we've got the main components, the backing plate, the driven pulley, the belt, and the driver pulley with the little shaft spacer things, all these. But what we basically got to do is mount this backing plate on first, but to do that, this little oil dipstick, actually the dipstick is technically on this side, the gray one, um, but this one, I don't really know what purpose this serves, why it has two, but it's actually in the way of this ribbing here when you go to mount this clutch up against this front plate here. The ribbing contacts this. So what I'm going to do is actually grind this ribbing out and basically make clearance for that oil cap. I may even have to cut the top of this little oil cap off, but I really don't care because I've got another one right there. Clamp down, ready to grind. That's the rib marked in black right there that we're going to be grinding away. I'm going to be taking it almost flush to the rest of the aluminum. And this is aluminum, so this should grind really easy. So we got it ground down. It was a little harder than I was expecting, considering it was aluminum. But that stuff was thick. You can see the aluminum shavings absolutely everywhere. But you can't even touch this thing right now because I don't know if you guys know this, but aluminum is one of the best conductors of heat. And this whole thing, the whole backing plate, has conducted all the heat for me grinding that one spot. So even if you touched over there, you'd probably burn yourself because the heat just travels through aluminum like you wouldn't believe. So we're going to let that cool off for a second and I'll get it mounted up on that engine. So you can see here, I did indeed have to remove the little fin thing, that top part, on this back oil cap because it's still, even with this backing plate ground down, just barely did not clear. So I ground it down, sanded it, and I'll probably paint it black here sometime soon. Alright, we're all mounted. I didn't use lock washers and go crazy with the torques and all that. I just wanted to get it on there to check for clearances because it'll probably be coming right back off. You can see how close that oil cap is to the backing plate and you can also see that I've got the engine already bolted down to the mounting plate we're going to be welding. So this thing's pretty much ready to go as far as mounting is concerned. So we're going to get the racing lawnmower frame back up on top of the desk here and try to mount this motor. Alright so we have the motor mounted within the confines of the racing lawnmower chassis. I had to take the driver clutch off because it was too bulky to try to fit into this steering box that I've made here. Um, but now you can see it could easily go back on um, the belt too. But that's not what the problem was. The problem was right in here, checking the clearance for this driven pulley. And we've got just enough to squeak by, it looks like. The driver pulley will be perfectly fine because it's out there all by itself. You can see this other side is about as close as you could go and still be able to operate, you know, all this stuff. It looks like to do any work to this thing, to pull this cover shroud off or anything, you're probably going to have to pull the whole motor right off the tractor to do anything. Um, that may even be the same case to change the belt, because this thing is uh, packed in such a tiny, small little spot. The first thing I'm going to have to do here is tack weld this piece of angle iron in here, because this moves around right now, and it makes it a real pain in the ass to try to fine-tune where this engine placement is, because this thing just keeps flopping over. So I'm going to tack weld this into the frame at six inches back, right there, that's going to be a six inch margin, and basically get it so it stays in one spot, check the measurements on the motor, and then maybe tack weld the front of this mounting plate in, 
Or the other thing I may do, which I've got to figure out, is how I'm going to mount the back side of this plate. Because before, I was just going to do another piece of angle iron right across the back. But now you can see that that torque converter clutch right there on this corner is kind of right in the way. And I can't really notch that backing plate because it will be all in the driven pulley. So i got to figure out how I'm going to mount the back side of this. Tack welded in on both inside corners and we're still perfectly square six inches off that front piece so we're going to go ahead and put the motor back on. So we got that motor set back in there. It's setting on that tack welded piece of angle iron on the front and that's going to be our front mount and we're going to weld that metal plate right to the angle iron but on the back side I think I got it figured out and what we're going to do is put that other piece of angle iron and just set it back further behind this mounting plate of the Comet clutch because you can see how close it is right there I'm going to take a piece of box steel, this one inch box steel, this screwdriver's here just to kind of keep the height right now um, but this box steel is going to weld into this piece of angle iron and this particular piece isn't long enough to do what I want it to do but I want to run it full length all the way up front to that front piece of box steel so it's like a giant H mounted under this engine plate and that should in theory lock this thing down so it's never going to move again but right now I think it's perfectly centered where I want it and everything clears just barely so I'm going to go ahead and tack weld that lower engine mounting plate to that piece of angle iron So we've got two more little tack welds there. I didn't want to get too carried away because it is an aluminum block and it does have oil in it. So I wasn't really into starting any fires right now. I got a little bit of uh, slag stuff on my black motor, but I don't think it's a big deal. It'll wipe right off. But yeah, the engine plate is now essentially tack welded to the frame. And there's one thing you want to make sure is that you've got the exact same distance on the front as you do on the rear between those two points. And the reason is, is you want to make sure this engine sits perfectly front to back, like straight, not off to the side a little bit, because your chain, which runs off the back of this little torque converter right there, has got to run perfectly straight also to your axle. Alright, so I took a trip to the steel supplier and got myself some nice pieces of steel. Here I got a three quarter inch piece of box. It's the same stuff that I used right here for the steering upright support. I'm going to use this for the seat. Got a piece of one inch box that'll help finish the engine mount there and a couple pieces of 5 8 cold rolled to mount my nerf bars and we got some expanded steel mesh which will go on the insides of those nerf bars. So let's get back to work. The first thing I got to do now is actually detach the motor from the engine mounting plate and finish welding that plate all into place. So now that that engine's off there you can kind of see what's going on. There's our front piece of angle iron with our engine mounting plate attached and our rear piece of angle iron which is not tack welded in yet but it is set at 13 and a half inches from this piece of angle iron. What we're going to do is cut a 13 and a half inch piece of this box steel and run that right underneath the center of this mounting plate welded to this piece of angle iron underneath this mounting plate as well and run it all the way back to here like a T and weld it into this. So we've got our frame flipped over now. Um, everything's still tack welded in. Obviously I tack welded the back piece in. What we're going to do now is try to get this puppy 
lined up and pounded into place between these two pieces of angle. There, that's pretty much in. Uh, what I'm going to do now is take my tape measure and make sure all these measurements are exactly in line with each other, get it centered within this plate, and we'll go ahead and weld it up. So now you can see we've got it firmly welded into place. It's still really hot. I haven't cleaned any of the slag yet, which you can see there's plenty of. Some welds look better than others, but they're all structurally very strong. We did a couple welds. You can see the hot marks from the welds down underneath. That front weld didn't come out the best, but it's pretty strong. I'll clean it up a little bit, but you won't see that so much. So that's not a big deal. We're going to wait for this thing to cool off and test fit the motor one more time, check the clearances, and we'll go from there. So we got the engine set back in there now that everything's cooled off. And it looks really good still. So, yeah, we're pretty happy here. We got enough room, and actually these slots actually allow for a little bit of twisting of the motor if you don't get it mounted perfectly. But... It's best to try to mount that plate as perfect as you can, if possible. But you can see we've got the motor slid all the way forward right now. You can see where it sits. You can see where it sits over there. It's pretty close. And then we slide it back. And it actually contacts right there as when you pull it all the way back. Which isn't a big deal, I just won't pull it back that far. But we've got probably close to an inch of movement in the motor front to back for tension. So that's good. Um, don't necessarily know if I'll use the motor to tension the chain. I may build like a little custom chain tensioner, spring loaded one. Just to keep the slack out of the chain. But it's nice to know that adjustability is there if I want it. So that's pretty much the video for today you guys. Um, I know it doesn't seem like much just mounting the motor here. But piece by piece this thing is slowly coming together. Next I'm probably going to do the seat mount and upright support out of that 3 quarter inch box steel I purchased. And the other thing I'm going to do is get my rims for my wheels, get those mounted and figure out where I'm going to mount my nerf bars with that expanded steel mesh. So we'll try to do that soon. So yeah, we're pretty much going to call it a day today. Um, if you like the video, you know, please rate it up. It definitely helps me out. Um, lets me know you guys like what's going on here. Uh, if you have any, you know, comments or suggestions, you know, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. I'm always reading that stuff and taking it into account, so thanks a lot to you guys who've helped me with this build. Um, but yeah, other than that, we'll see you next time.